what's going on everyone hope you're having a good weekend um welcome back to the channel if this is your first time checking out the channel then make sure you subscribe and follow me on twitter <clears throat> at super dc now there's been some exciting stuff going on the past couple days and of course now we're only two days away from the us united november 17th where we will get to re-experience the trailer again for Zack Snyder's Justice League. Hopefully it will have, I'm hoping, there will be a release date attached to it. Hoping, I don't know, maybe there's going to be new footage. Um, <clears throat> Zack mentioned it's going to be a little bit different, but he didn't say how. So that could mean longer, could mean a release date, could be both, I don't know. But <clears throat> um, if you're familiar with Fabian Wagner, who's the director of photography, who has always expressed his appreciation for working with Zach. Um, he has shared stuff in the past before from when they shot the movie together a few years ago. But um, the other day he mentioned that leading up to the 17th, he's going to be sharing some like behind the scenes photos and stuff like that. So he's already shared a few, <clears throat> um, well, quite a few. Today he shared four actually. Um, he shared one of Henry Cavill, at what looks to be the Memorial Park scene when he fights the other Justice League members. Um, he also shared a few pictures of the Amazons on Themyscira with the mother box. And he shared a couple images of, he shared one of Wonder Woman, um, looks like the tunnel scene. And then he shared one of her as Diana, <laughs> I guess you would say. Um, in that white coat he shared we see hippolyta and again some of the other amazons um from the mascara so it's yeah cool oh another one of wonder woman i'm just looking at the ones i shared on how i shared them on twitter so yeah amazons the mascara um in the tomb i guess you would call it where they have the mother box protected and so then he also shared, let me go back. Yesterday, the last one he shared, what, well, the only one he shared was Diana with the Batmobile just before they were getting ready to um, do a take. Um, and before that, he had shared, um, let me find it. It's way down here on my Twitter feed. Oh, yes. The scene where we'll, we're going to see Cyborg and, well, he's not Cyborg yet, Victor Stone and his mom in the car accident where he, where she dies and he becomes so mutilated that his father, Silas, has to resort to using the mother box to save him, which then turns him into <clears throat> Cyborg. So, of course, all of that was removed from the theatrical version of Justice League. We didn't see any of that. Him and his father quickly mentioned it in an argument that they're having, but everything important to Cyborg's arc was removed. All the emotional stuff was removed. And earlier um, we were watching the old trailers from Justice League way back when. And when you watch those, like you really see how much emotional content was removed for, from Cyborg's character. Um, and then when I was watching Sean O'Connell from Cinema Blend, they've been doing these weekly episodes where they take a, they're take they looking at each Justice League member and <clears throat> describing how they expect them to be different in Zack Snyder's Justice League compared to the theatrical version. And for Cyborg, they mentioned, and it makes a lot of sense, that <clears throat> when you think about it and you look, think back to the theatrical version, and we don't want to, but it's bearable now that we know, <laughs> sort of, since we're getting Zack Snyder's, but they didn't really give like everything that was taken away from Cyborg's character arc was all of the stuff that really gave him a chance to show his emotional side, his acting ability for Ray Fisher. Um, we're gonna see so much more of that in Zack Snyder's Justice League. And he said so many times that Cyborg's the heart of the movie in a lot of ways. We didn't get to see that at all portrayed in any way in Justice League. So speaking of Ray Fisher, um, Friday night, he also shared 
what I think is an awesome image of Cyborg and the Flash, where Cyborg is projecting an image, what looks to be the mother boxes, I think. And the look on his face, speaking of emotion, oh my gosh, he looks angry, he looks emo he looks upset, but his, his design, his CG looks so, so good. Like, finished, amazing, like, oh my god, I can't wait. I can't wait to see him in, like, high quality. He's gonna look so, so good compared to all the last minute stuff they tried to rush for his CGI. In the theatrical cut so and then of course his caption was that was remember hashtag us united so it looks like he's on board with that as well i don't see why he wouldn't be but it looks like he's you know acknowledging the us united campaign that's going to be going on um <clears throat> so i just wanted to kind of share those i'm sure you all have seen them but since i haven't had a chance to make a video about it um i wanted to of course include that the other thing i wanted to talk about was the other night, Zack Snyder was on a live stream with Dave the Film Junkie. He finally got to like do a one-on-one -on -one interview with him, which was really cool to see. It was happy for him. It seems like the YouTube community and Twitter is like so excited that Film Junkie got to do that. So shout outs to him. <clears throat> and it was a really cool, it was really fun. I always love the um, discussions that Zack has with fans about the movie and his other movies too. He, first of all, Zach like gives so much time to his fans, to us fans, to do this kind of stuff. You know, like I don't know who else does this, but pretty sure he's setting the trend. Like, I don't know, no one else does that. But some interesting stuff he talked about that, um, in my opinion, he like strongly hinted at a flashback scene of the Joker and Robin which has been, there's been a lot of speculation about that recently, um, knowing that Jared Leto's Joker is going to be in the movie, knowing he's, knowing now that he's going to look different, still recognizable, but he's also, he's obviously going to have a very different look. And when that topic came up with Dave the Film Junkie and, and, and Zach, Zach was pretty specific in his description of how he would do that kind of scene in a movie he mentioned this is what he said that bruce would be drinking and he'd be thinking about it and remembering back to what happened with robin that's pretty specific i mean you know in describing how he would portray that in a in a scene in a movie um <clears throat> He also talked about, I think this was on his one with Grace Randolph. Um, I think this also kind of points to the fact, the notion that we might see a flashback scene is that he said that there's water under the proverbial bridge between Batman and Joker. So that's why he feels like it was always meant somehow for Jared Leto's Joker to be involved in this movie. Um, so I don't know, I'm kind of on the, I'm 50-50 on whether he's going to be in a nightmare scene or in a flashback scene. I think maybe we could see him in both. I think there's a, maybe it's going to be both. I don't know. I don't think I'm 100% leaning one way or the other um, for how we're going to see him. Maybe it's both. Maybe it's a little bit of both. And for a flashback scene, like you wouldn't have to really, it would be pretty, I don't, it wouldn't be very long. Well, I don't know. Some flashback scenes are, but for something like that, if it's as brutal and violent as has been said recently, then I don't think you want to show too much, especially if it's kind of showing like a memory where, where um, Bruce is drinking, but I don't know. That was pretty specific in my opinion. He's obviously given that thought about how he would show that. And <clears throat> another thing that was interesting was... Friday night, I was on um, a panel on a live stream talking about all this Grace Randolph, all the good stuff we got from the interview. And one thing I had mentioned in that in that panel was something that Zach actually kind of said in his live stream that same night later on with the Film Junkie was that I had said before and on that panel 
speaking of all the scary hard stuff that the studio wouldn't let him do or put in the movie, um, I don't think he would have given as much, I don't think he would have given away as much of that as he did at the Snyder Con last year about dark side boob to begin to kill Lois and stuff in the Batcave. I don't think he would have mentioned all of that had he known that we were actually going to see all of this someday. Because that's a really big thing to give away. And in that stream with Film Junkie, he said, I never thought that this was going to see the light of day, at least not for like even several more years. And <clears throat> he thought that he he kind of explained like I, this was my prediction also was that maybe he thought if I do at some point get to finish my movie and release it, it's probably just going to be the 214 what they would have let me release in theaters. I'll be able to clean that up and finish it up and release it. But not this whole four hour like no compromise full freedom version. I don't think he ever thought that would come out. But when he was talking to Film Junkie about it, he said that he was constantly being bugged not to film stuff and that he would, you know, kind of get around it by saying, oh, it's just going to be a few seconds. It's going to be a snippet here and there. And he was, he had his own, I think he mentioned that Grace Randolph, he had his own cut that he was like, I'm not going to ever show this to the exec, to the, to the studio because I know this is too much for them. So whatever he showed them was not everything. That whole five hour assembly cut, that's not what he showed them. He's like, I know that this stuff is going to be too much for the studio. And I think a lot of that was probably the hard, scary stuff that they didn't want him to even think about, including in the movie. So it's interesting. I mean, we think back to when he said, like, I have... A few cuts you know but he knew that there was only probably that one that they were gonna sort of let him do you know for the for theaters so and then like he has said the his version that he has showed people who have come over to his house and stuff and that he's watched himself that's his movie that's what we're getting you know now what he showed warner brothers way back when when he was filming so I guess that's kind of what I was thinking before he never thought that we were actually going to get to see his unfiltered I guess you could say version of Justice League now we're getting everything he wants to show us and he thought that when he was they meant when talking about that um Dave was kind of bringing up like well yeah you were kind of sharing a lot like on Vero and stuff like that like we were, a lot of us were thinking, like, is he allowed to be sharing this? Is he allowed to be showing this much stuff? And Zach said, I thought at some point, like, someone's going to call me and tell me to stop. <laughs> like, they're going to tell me I shouldn't be showing all of this. But I guess since that didn't happen, you kind of just was like, okay, here, like, I'll say this, I'll share that, you know, which I thought that was pretty funny that he thought that they were going to stop him from sharing stuff of his version that, like, he thought we were never going to see you know so and he also kind of said that I don't know if I would have mentioned what I did at SnyderCon had I known that this was going to take place eventually so oh I don't know but we'll um we're getting it and I can't wait um I can't wait to see the trailer again Tuesday he's gonna be doing a live stream on Vero he said he will be tweeting out at what time to be expecting that he didn't give a um he said he's guessing around 9 a.m pacific time but he will tweet that just to make sure everyone knows the um exact time for sure so we can well it's already sunday at this time so hopefully we'll know by tonight or tomorrow um we have to know <laughs> ahead of time when that's going to happen so we should know soon but um, thanks for watching, guys. Keep up with everything on Twitter. You can follow me. I'm always, like, trying to keep up with that stuff, retweeting, sharing stuff. Um, don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you next time pretty soon. There'll be some exciting stuff in our very near future.